Welcome to another review from the Four Corners of the Board with your host, Graham Anderson. Hello everyone, this is Graham Anderson from Four Corners of the Board. Today I'm going to be looking at a game called Monarch. In this game you take the role of a princess trying to become the monarch of the realm Minerva. It's a light set collection and strategy game, but is there enough in this game to keep me wanting to revisit the land of Minerva? Let's get to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back for my final thoughts. So here we have Monarch all set up. The first thing you're going to be doing is taking out 9 out of the 12 supply tiles and placing them in the land section here. Uh, there are two different types of tiles. There's farms which are going to be collecting food and villages where you're going to be collecting money. You're going to be laying out 5 cards which is the market and then laying out the banner cards which players can claim during their turn. To start the game each player is given 5 gold and 5 food. Now on your turn you're going to be either taxing or harvesting from the lands and then buying as many cards as you want and you can also wipe out the market if you desire. So to harvest or tax. To harvest, you're going to be taking uh, whatever the tiles say here. This one says one, so if I'm going to harvest, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five food. If I wish to tax, I have to pay one food for every village that there is. So right now there's four villages, so I'd have to pay four food and I would collect whatever coins that the villages say. At the beginning, each village is only going to supply one. So I'd get four coins back. Once I've done that, I can buy cards and there are four different types of cards. The first type of card is a guest card that will give you the cost up on the top right hand corner here and they'll give you how many victory points you're going to be getting which is the, uh, the crown icons in the middle and any kind of special abilities that, that they will give you. There are four different suits of cards. There are culture cards, bounty cards, might cards and wisdom cards and when you purchase a guest card like this one here you're going to place it in front of you, your tableau, and this is your court area. As soon as someone has seven cards in their court area, finish the round, and then you'll be counting victory points and the game will end. The second type of card you can purchase from the market are kind of land upgrades. There are both farm and village upgrades, so this one is a uh, village upgrade. And again, you'll pay the cost in the top right hand corner, and you will apply it to one of the villages. Now a village upgrade can of course only go on a village, and a farm upgrade can only go on a farm. So we can place that here. Uh, you can purchase cards uh, before you tax or harvest or after. It doesn't matter which one. You can, and you can purchase as many cards as you want from the market. Uh, but you can only ever tax and harvest once per round. So now if I was going to tax, uh, I would still only play four food. But now I'd get four gold from the upgraded village. And then five, six, seven. So I would get seven uh, gold in return. The next type of card is a, uh, a moon card which kind of looks like this. As soon as you flip one of these over when you're refilling the market, you're going to action it right away. You're going to be doing whatever it says and then discarding this from the game. Uh, usually these cards are either negative or positive. Sometimes they will be, you know, as a group you have to discard so many, let's say food. As a group you must discard five food and then everyone will get three gold in return or something like that. Uh, the last type of card is called an unwanted guest. And again, you're going to be paying the cost in the type right hand corner and you're going to be giving this to someone else because they will give you minus points at the end of the game. These do not count towards the seven people in your court. These are in addition to that. The last thing you're going to be doing that you could do is as soon as you get two cards of one type, you can declare that you're going to be following one of these banners. And each banner will tell you what the, re the requirements are to get it. Uh, and then they'll give you a kind of usually a special ongoing bonus and ways to score victory points at the end of the game. Once someone has seven cards, you're going to be adding up all the victory points from your court cards, from your banner cards, and then whoever has the most victory points is the winner. So let's get back to the table and see what I thought about Monarch. So how does Monarch stand up? Well, you know, looking at this box, looking at the tiles, and especially reading the back of the box, I'm expecting some dark you know, heavy strategic game. What you get is an incredibly, incredibly light uh, set collection and strategy game. So once you know that, how does the game stack up? Well, you know what? Unfortunately, it's just too light of a game. Um, there are several aspects that at first I thought were interesting, such as those uh, tiles in the middle that make up the realm. With everybody taxing and harvesting the same group, it got to a point when you saw a village or farm upgrades and you were thinking to yourself, well, why should I buy it? I must let someone else buy it and I will reap the benefit off their turn. Now sometimes it made sense that you can get the benefit right away if you had the coins or the, the uh, food that you could buy an upgrade 
and then tax or uh, harvest right after that, but you've still bought it for everyone else to benefit. I really wish there was a way that you could somehow personalize those tiles. What I would really love is to have village or farm upgrades that were specific, let's say, to a banner. So you could buy a village upgrade that said, if you had the banner of wisdom, then you would get a bonus from taxing this. People that didn't have that banner would get a less uh, benefit for it. So it would make sense for you to buy village upgrades or farm upgrades when they came up, especially if you had those banners. But the way it works is you were just kind of waiting for someone to pull the trigger. You didn't want to spend the resources because you knew when it came back around to you, you'd get the benefit from someone else spending the resources. And depending on how those villages and uh, farms come up, if it's a game that's really tight on money, then let someone else spend the money. Really tight on food, let someone else spend the food. I'll just get the benefit later on. Now at some point, someone has to pull the trigger. And that kind of leads me into my next problem. I really felt this game was a waiting game. Once you bought your first card, or especially once you got your first banner, you were just waiting for your cards to come up. If there were no good cards to buy, you didn't buy any. You wiped them and saw if there were any more. Wiping costs three gold. Now, if there's a game where there's lots of gold flowing, that's fine. If not, you're just kind of waiting to hopefully someone will buy a card so it can be replaced. It's really one of these simplistic games in which you see a good card, you buy a good card. You see a bad card like there's unwanted guests, you buy it and give it to someone else. No good cards, wipe and wait for your cards. It's a just a long kind of waiting game. The game can last 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And really after the first couple rounds, well, once you bought your first couple cards, you're just waiting for the next half hour. Oh, I have no cards here. Well, what am I going to do? Collect resources and wait for maybe cards to come up. So really, I can't recommend Monarch. I really ended up not enjoying this game at all. It's just too simplistic. There's not enough substance to this game to really make it worthwhile recommending. Now you might think, hey, but it looks like a good introductory, you know, light family game. And it, the first time I played it, I thought, hey, it's not bad. But the more I played it, the more I realized how much it lacks in substance. I could see this game, even as a light introductory game, playing it a couple times, but there's nothing that's going to keep you wanting to come back to this game. And that, I think, is a big detriment to this game. So I can't recommend this game. But as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching another review from the four corners of the board. Please like and subscribe to these videos. You can also follow us on social media, email us directly, or check out our website at fourcornersoftheboard.com. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.